following is a Jackass Nation production. Subscribe to us on Podbean at jackassnation.podbean.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the following show is supported by Amazon.com. Use the link in the description below so you can help support this and all other shows on the Jackass Nation. Go home, go home, go home. I don't have to take this. I'm going home. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Ladies and gentlemen, this next match is a go-home match. Introducing first, the Jersey Jackass, your champion, BC. That's the bottom line, the Stone Cold Jackass. New Day Rocks! New Day Rocks! Yes, the New Day Rocks, and they are still coming soon to WWE SmackDown. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Go Home. This is your host, the Jersey Jackass, your boy, B to the C. What is going on? I am honored to have y'all listening and talking with me today. We are going to talk about two uh, big WWE events going on this weekend. We have... NXT TakeOver, as well as WWE Backlash, the SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view. But that is not the only wrestling shows going on this weekend. As well, Saturday night, you can see MPX Girls Fight Guys Wrestle. That's right, it is going down. Uh, Michael Schaefer will take on Kenny Steele as he defends the Prospect title. His fourth defense, if he can win, he can cash it in for a main title shot. Mr. Mayhem, Stephen Be- Kirby, takes on Tommy Becker once again. Becker escaped Kirby last week and still not being pinned or submitted. We'll see what happens this week. Taylor Kabat takes on Mach- Machiko. Mia Yim, a.k.a. Jade from Impact Wrestling, former Impact Wrestling champion, champion. Uh, women's champion takes on Baby D. Alley Cat takes on Jules Malone. The Radical Athletes defend my MPX Tag Team Championships against DTF and so much more. Make sure you are there. Frankie Fisher, the flying asshole, will be in attendance. He will be a part of the show. So definitely make sure you check that out. But, guys, we are going to talk a little bit about some WWE pay-per-views. I know you guys are just as excited as I am for these awesome shows. But before we get into them, I've got to remind you that this month, we salute those who stand up for others. Whether they are protecting the galaxy, the world, or just the neighborhood, all hail the Guardians. With items from Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Star Wars, Destiny, and the Goonies, Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box service which provides boxes of geek and gaming related merchandise and as always includes its monthly t-shirt and pen. And right now you can get a discount on your box of loot just by going to lootcrate.com slash SCNS Live. Now they'll give you they'll give you a discount on your box loot. You want to see all the cool stuff you're missing out on, go to youtube.com slash SCNS Live and check out our unboxing videos. We got a lot of different boxes and different things. You can check out all the different kinds of loot that we've been getting. And you can see how cool Loot Crate is. You want to stop missing out on Loot Crates. Go to LootCrate.com slash SCNS Live. Put in the promo code SCNS Live at checkout and start getting your boxes of loot today. Guys, I was going to try my absolute best to uh, to get Kenny Steele on the show so that this show would be okay. But unfortunately, our schedules could not line up. Uh, the goal will be to get Kenny here on the show uh, for uh, Extreme Rules. That will be my hope. I hope, hope be able, Kenny will be able to sit here and talk with me. We'll be able to get through that. But this is Go Home. We're going to talk two great shows going down this weekend. We got NXT TakeOver Chicago that we're going to start out with. Um, all right, we are looking at... Roderick Strong starting out against Eric Young of Sanity. Uh, he'll have Alexander Wolf and Killian Dane out there by his side uh, for this one. So, 
expect them to definitely get involved. Now, Roderick Strong hasn't completely uh, impressed me. I know a lot of people out there really like him, but for me personally, I, I, I just haven't really cared that much. So uh, there hasn't really been anything to make me really connect or care about his character. So uh, I'm definitely going to be going with Eric Young on this one. I think Eric's going to pull it out. I don't think this is the end of any kind of uh, feud for the two of them uh, if they are trying to build a feud. I hope they're trying to build one and they can add a little bit more to Roderick Strong's character. We will definitely have to wait and see how that plays out. But I'm going to go with Eric Young on this one. Uh, Sanity is definitely going to get involved. You, you can you can count on that. Uh, next up on May 6th, during the United King- Kingdom Championship live taping, Tyler Bate defeated Joseph Con- Connors to retain the WWE United King- Kingdom Championship. Following the match, it was announced that on May 7th, Bate would defend his title against Mark Andrews, who had become the number one contender, defeating James Drake. Bate would go on to win that match. Also on on, on May 7th, Pete Dunne defeated Trent Seven to become the new number one contender. Bate and Dunne are now set to face off each other for the United Kingdom Championship right here on TakeOver Chicago. Now, I don't know too much about... Uh, either of these guys. Uh, I liked Tyler Bate showing up. I believe he showed up in the uh, in the Battle Royal, or in the Royal Rumble, and he was definitely pretty entertaining. I definitely, I, I, I liked him. He was, he was pretty cool. Uh, and then you have uh, your boy Pete Dunne, who is just, he, he just seems like a monster. He seems like a heavy hitter. He seems like someone that 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 definitely has some strong style to him, and I like the potential of this match. I think this one could really be one that kind of helps steal the show. Um, I don't really watch the United Kingdom Championship, so I don't know much about what all is going on with them. But I'm excited to see this match because once again, I think they could see it. I, I I since I don't watch, I don't know who has the momentum going into it. Uh, if I had to pick one, I'd say that Tyler Bate is going to keep the championship. I don't see him losing it. Uh, so that's going to be where I go on that. Next up, we have the Authors of Pain taking on DIY. Do it yourself. Okay. Um, you know what? I say that. I say okay. Like I'm not really that interested in it. But... That tag match at the last takeover was probably one of the ones that really uh, here in Dallas the one that the, the one that really stole the show. Um, so or not Dallas it was it was uh, there in uh, Orlando for WrestleMania. It def- that one definitely stole the show. So so who knows this one could too. I just I, I'm not two in on DIY or the Authors of Pain. Um, I kind of want to see Heavy Machinery and Authors of Pain go at it because I don't see DIY beating the Authors of Pain. It, just, it, it wouldn't make much sense to me from this at, at this point in time. But uh, who knows? You know, they have a lot of steam uh, going through them so, or going with them behind them. So D- maybe DIY go ahead and picks it up. Maybe they're about to move up. Who knows? But uh, if I had to pick a winner here, I'm going to go with Authors of Pain. I think I think uh, their their run is not over, and I think their run leads to heavy machinery. I think that's what the audience wants to see, and I think that's what we're going to eventually get going down the line. All right, next up, we have a triple threat. Asuka successfully defended her NXT Women's Championship against Ember, Ember Moon at NXT TakeOver Orlando, which I did not see that coming. I thought Ember Moon was going to get that. But during the match, Asuka shoved the referee onto Moon to avoid the eclipse, uh, continuing Asuka's transition into more of a heel role that began back at Orlando uh, or TakeOver Toronto. Uh, on May 3rd on NXT, Moon, Ruby Riot, and Nick, Nikki Cross were the final three combatants remaining in a number one contender's battle royal. When these three were the last three out there, Asuka attacked all three women, resulting in a no contest and cementing Asuka's heel turn. After the match, Regal announced that Asuka will defend the NXT Women's Championship against all not one, but all three 
of the uh, final combatants of the Battle Royal, Ember Moon, Ruby Riot, and Nikki Cross in a fatal four-way match at TakeOver Chicago. However, during the scuffle in that Battle Royal, Ember Moon was thrown from the ring and suffered a legitimate shoulder injury after being uh, uh, checked out at by, by officials after the match. So... Uh, therefore, Moon was pulled from the match, making it a triple threat. So we will have Asuka versus Ruby Rose versus Nikki Cross. Um, I think this one is safe to say that this will be uh, Asuka's win. She will go ahead and win this because if if Ember Moon was involved, Ember might win it. And I think all all signs point to Ember eventually being the one to take it from Asuka. However, I think Ruby Wright and Nikki Cross are going to be too involved with each other, and it's going to cost them the match, therefore letting uh, uh, Asuka go ahead and hang on to her title. Um, at, at, uh, back at NXT Orlando TakeOver, uh, Bobby Roode retained the NXT Championship, defeating Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, before he headed up to SmackDown. The following Wednesday on NXT, Rude came out and insulted Nakamura, which impromptu Hideo Itami to interrupt Rude's speech and slap him and attack him with a GTS. The following week on NXT, William Regal made the title match official between the two for NXT TakeOver Chicago. It will be exciting to see Hideo Itami. One of the first times that uh, I saw NXT was when Hideo Tommy used the GTS for the first time on uh, Tyler Breeze at TakeOver San Jose, maybe it was, or San Francisco. I don't remember which one they called, but it was TakeOver up there for that WrestleMania. And that audience went insane. And I always thought Hideo was a pretty cool guy. I haven't seen much of him because he's always been injured. But I am excited to see where they go from here and how this championship plays out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Bobby Roode keeps the championship. I do not see him losing it because he is oh so glorious. But uh, that's just me. All right, guys, that's NXT TakeOver Chicago. What are your thoughts on the show? Let me know right here. Use the hashtag go home to uh, join in on the conversation and we'll get And we'll get involved here. I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be a great show. Make sure to hit me up on Twitter at RealJackSBC. R-E-L-J-A-C-K-A-S-S-B-C. I don't know if I'm going to watch it live. I might have to watch it like, uh, you know, a couple hours after it airs. uh, Depending, I have a lot going on this weekend. So we will definitely have to see how it goes. All right, guys. Let's take a look at the SmackDown-specific pay-per-view. Backlash. That's right. Backlash was always one of my more favorite pay-per-views before recently because it, uh, you know, it was always kind of like the fallout from WrestleMania, and you got to see a lot of WrestleMania rematches and stuff like that, and they always went a different way. So it was always fun to see. Uh, Now it is definitely a SmackDown-centered pay-per-view, SmackDown only. Uh, And on our, we're going to start out. We got a lot of good matches here, starting out with our pre-show. Uh, which will see the perfect 10, Ty Dillinger, take on Aiden English, uh, former VOD villain uh, Aiden English. Uh, He has began his solo solo career, but he was defeated by Dillinger on, uh, I believe, back on like April 11th or something like that. And on May 16th, a match between the two uh, was an, was announced and scheduled for the Backlash pre-show. Uh, it's going to be a decent match. Um, I really like the Perfect Ten. I think he's going to do a great job on SmackDown. I think he's really going to fit in there. And I think this is just a warm-up match for him. We will definitely see uh, the Perfect Ten take the win. Uh, I, I guess maybe that's just me, but that's where I'm going with it. Perfect Ten for the one, two, three. Uh, on the post WrestleMania SmackDown, the Wyatt family uh, were defeated by WWE Champion Randy Orton and former Wyatt member Luke Harper. Uh, but the following week was the Superstar Shakeup, where we saw Bray move over to Raw and uh, change up a whole lot, uh, basically disbanding the Wyatt family. Rowan and Harper then both they, they competed in the WWE Championship number one contender six pack challenge but were both unsuccessful and on the May 9th episode of SmackDown Rowan defeated Harper in a singles match 
But the next week on Talking Smack, Rowan said that he disliked the fact that Harper had left the Rowan family or the Wyatt family. He said that although he defeated Harper the previous week, he felt that Harper deserved much more punishment and requested another match against him. To which Shane McMahon said, okay, cool, let's do it. So here we are having the match of the ages. Eric Rowan, Luke Harper. Who gives a crap? Uh, I really like Luke Harper. I really do. I think he's really talented. And Eric Rowan, uh, he's, he's got some, something to him as well. But this, I, I just don't care about this. I, honestly, uh, until right now, I didn't even realize this was a match because they've cut it out of Hulu. I guess, because I haven't really seen anything having to do with this match. There's been no build-up to it. It's just a match that's going to happen. And uh, I guess we'll just wait and see how all it goes, but honestly, uh, don't really care too much for it. But we'll see. One match that I am looking forward to is Baron Corbin going one-on-one with Sami Zayn. Uh, this one, this one's exciting to me. I really like uh, Baron Corbin. I think he's really uh, grown. He has really grown on me because I really did not like him uh, to begin with. And when he, he, I don't know what it was. I don't know where the turn happened. Uh, partially, maybe to part of breaking ground. I don't know on NXT, but he really started to grow on me. And now I've really liked the performer that he's become. He's really entertaining in the ring. I, I, I always, whenever, because I always have SmackDown or Raw on, and I'm always doing other stuff too, because I'm always working or writing or something. And whenever Baron Corbin comes on, I got to stop and watch and check out that match, because it always entertained me and it always keeps me um, excited and ready for it. So, uh, you know, we've had a lot of build-up to it. It's been a fun build-up to it, and Corbin's been kicking the crap out of Zayn. And I think Zayn will definitely need uh, some kind of big push here. Like He's definitely going to need to pull out something extra to get the win. So we'll wait and see. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this match. I think it's going to be a good one. It's not going to be a show-stealer, but it's going to be a good match. What is going to be a show-stealer is is uh, possibly Kevin Owens and AJ Styles one-on-one for the United States Championship. These are two really talented guys, and I'm really looking forward to seeing them clash in the ring. Completely different styles. Kevin Owens, another one of the guys that I like to model myself after. I I attempt in the ring, attempt to kind of do as Kevin Owens does and pull a little bit inspiration from him. So, uh... I'm, and AJ is one of my all-time favorites. I've, I really enjoyed uh, watching AJ grow and finally getting here to the WWE, and I'm excited to see what they can pull out of each other in this match. Uh, you know, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say a winner. I think Corbin's going to win against Sami Zayn. In this one, I think Kevin Owens gets the win. I don't think it's a clean win, but I think it's some by some kind of nefarious means that he gets the 1-2-3 over AJ Styles to continue this run of the face of the United States of America, a Canadian. (laughs) It's been pretty entertaining. I love what they're doing with it, and they don't need to stop the momentum of this run. So let it keep going. Let's wait and let AJ take it a little while down the road. Now that match is one that I'm excited about, one that I did not think I would be excited about, but they were able to pull me in and get me excited is the Tag Team Championship match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And that is Breezango taking on the champions, the Usos. Uh, When they won this, I was pretty shocked. I I, I don't know who said, yeah, this was the idea to go with, where we decided this was going to be a payoff match. But um, I am excited to see what goes down and what these guys are able to pull out We'll have to. Well, I'm definitely gonna look forward to it. the the fashion files, the uh, Law and Order esque promos that the uh, that Brizongo has been putting on have been nothing short of incredible. Um, they've been hilarious. When you when you hear one of them after they do the entrance to the fashion file, and one of them just goes, "Bung bung," it's <laughs> it has me laughing every single time. I have love what they're doing. And then the Usos have come out and cut some incredible post-match promos against them. They have been completely on point. These guys, I don't know if they're practicing them in the back 
or or they just know each other so well, which is a very viable option, seeing as they are twins. Uh, but they, they've just been completely on point with the mic work in here. And the, the Usos are very talented. Tyler Breeze, I always thought was talented. I never quite liked the gimmick. But him and Fandango seem to click very well. So I think this really could be an entertaining match. Uh, I'm going to go with the Usos retaining the championships. I don't think it's uh, Breezango's time, some say. So definitely going to go with the Usos. While this match was able to catch my attention, one that has not caught my attention is uh, something I think SmackDown is actually lacking now, and that is the women's division. Naomi, Charlotte, and Becky will take on the welcoming committee in a six-person tag. Um, I just I, I don't like six-person tags. I feel like they're just well, we need to throw everybody in there, so let's just put them all in one match. Uh, I feel it. I feel it's weak. I feel it's soft. I feel they can't get a lot done. Uh, who knows? These girls are all very talented, and they could pull something out. Um, but the fact that James Ellsworth will be out there makes me not give a rat's ass about the damn match. Uh, losing Alexa was definitely a big blow for SmackDown. Not having Nikki there is, I think, really kind of hurting them. If you could have broken this up into maybe a tag match and then a singles match or something, maybe it would have worked a little better. But I'm just not interested in this uh, welcoming committee storyline. But... Is is I, I guess the thing that keeps you entertained is is Charlotte gonna turn? How's this gonna happen? Uh, who knows? Uh, I think I'm gonna say that the welcoming committee gets the win. I'm gonna say that the that, that Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky cannot work as a team, and the welcoming committee pulls out a W. God, I just wish they'd fire James Ellsworth. That's I mean, that, that's all. All right, our WWE Championship will be on the line. Randy Orton going one-on-one with Jinder Mahal. Uh, What? That's right. Jinder Mahal. Uh, Okay. So, WrestleMania 33 happens and Orton defeats Bray Wyatt to win the championship. Uh, then everything went down, setting up the House of Horrors match that was not going to be for the title, which was probably one of the dumbest things that we have I have ever seen. Now, before the House of Horrors match happened, uh, we had a six-pack uh, challenge to see who would become the number one contender. Now, this challenge included Eric Rowan, Luke Harper, Mojo Rawley, Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn, and Jinder Mahal. Now, at the end of the match, the NXT's The Bollywood Boys, uh, who are now going by the name The Singh Brothers, uh, showed up and, and kind of helped Jinder Mahal win this thing. And then Jinder Mahal is your number one contender out of absolutely nowhere. I guess it makes sense that he's going up against Randy Orton, who can hit the uh, RKO out of nowhere, possibly on a number one contender who came out of, that's right, nowhere. Now, they have done a good job in building up uh, Jinder Mahal when the uh, House of Horrors match did happen at Payback, a Raw pay-per-view on April on April 30th. Uh, when they got back to the ring, uh, Jinder Mahal, who had stolen the WWE Championship for a photo shoot, uh, attacked Randy Orton and, and, you know, attacked him with the belt and all that good stuff, and which led to uh, Bray Wyatt getting the win. Um... Since then, the Singh brothers have been attacking Orton and all sorts of things have been going down and we've geared up for a match that has a pretty good build-up, which I didn't think we would see, but here it is. We saw it and, uh, yeah, we have a match going down between Jinder and Randy and this is a main event for the title. Now, now they've done a good job of building up Jinder Mahal, like I've said. The problem rises is... is I don't know if Jinder is a, uh, a a talented enough talent to carry the brand. I don't know if he's someone that you can have beat Randy Orton, but if he does not win, it, you risk wasting everything you've done building him up. Uh, so how does this all play out unless, uh, unless somehow the Singh brothers end up costing Jinder Mahal the match by some accident or something like that? Um, I, I don't know how this one really goes. But uh, I'm excited to see it, I guess. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Randy Orton winning. Although, 
Honestly, the way they've built it, it could be a toss-up because they really have put a lot behind Jinder Mahal. So, who knows? My the, smart money. I'm put. If I was a betting man, which I am, uh, I would go ahead and put the money on Jinder Mahal. I mean, on on Randy Orton because that's the easy bet. But Jinder Mahal might pay out a lot when he gets the victory, but. We'll see. Now, that is your main event. However, I believe the actual main event will be a match that I also believe will open the show, steal the show, and rock the house the most. And that is the debut of Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, Nakamura has... uh, This whole pay-per-view has been built around Nakamura. Uh, Without... You know, you have no John Cena on the show... So your biggest star next to the biggest star is Randy Orton next to that, and then you go you Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, but the biggest name would probably be Shinsuke Nakamura, the one we're all most looking forward to. Now Nakamura debuted on SmackDown on April fourth, interrupting the Miz and Maurice during Miz TV, where we were where we were both uh, uh, we got to see Nakamura do his awesome entrance. And then on the next SmackDown, he comes out again and is interrupted by Dolph Ziggler. Uh, he, he comes out and he interrupts Dolph Ziggler's in-ring promo. Ziggler attempts to superkick Nakamura, but nope, ain't gonna work with old Naki. Naki retaliated and hits the inverted exploder suplex on Ziggler, who then retreated out of the ring. It was announced to the two that Nakamura would have his debut right here on Backlash against... An unknown opponent. On May 2nd episode of SmackDown, Ziggler criticized Commissioner Shane McMahon and General Manager Daniel Bryan for hyping Nakamura for Backlash, even though he had not had a match on SmackDown or in the actual WWE yet. The following week, Ziggler cut another promo touting his accomplishments before calling out Nakamura. Nakamura would call for a referee, but so but before the match could begin, Ziggler backed out and said he would face Nakamura at Backlash, which is how we have gotten to today. Since then, Ziggler has berated Nakamura over and over and over and dismissed any any kind of real competition that Nakamura may have against the Dolph Ziggler. Dolph is one of the most talented athletes that they have on the roster, and Nakamura is one of the greatest up-and-comings in the WWE. Now, he's been around for a long time, but this is the first time the main WWE audience is really going to get to see him, unless you really do watch NXT, which not as much of the main audience does. So, this could turn out to be the show-stealing main event of the night. This match is the one I am most looking forward to. I feel they will open up the show with this match, and it'll be very interesting to see how it all plays out and who gets the win. Well, it won't be too interesting to who gets the win. I'm pretty sure Nakamura will be going over. That is where all my money would go. If I could take, if I could go to Vegas right now, I would put it all on Nakamura to get the win over Ziggler. However, I would put all of my money plus all of your money on the fact that this match is going to be one hell of a WWE matchup. All right, guys, so that is our SmackDown and NXT TakeOver Chicago and Backlash uh, preview. One ma- a, a card, Two cards that I'm really looking forward to. What are you most excited about? What matches are you most looking forward to? Use the hashtag GoHome on Twitter. Hit me up on all the social medias, whether it be Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, uh, hell, hit me up on Xbox Live at RealJackSBC, R-E-L-J-A-C-K-A-S-S-B-C. Uh, in about two weeks, right before Extreme Rules, I hope to have the one and only Kenny Steele to come help this show be okay as we talk Extreme Rules. Hopefully that'll work out. Tweet him out and let him know that you all want to see and hear him. Uh, until then, this has been another great episode of Backlash. Make sure to check out all the other shows on the Jackass Nation as well as the Off Shoots Network. We'll see you next time. We are going home. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to Go Home. We'll be back right before the next WWE pay-per-view. Don't forget to follow BC on Twitter at RealJackAssBC. We'll see you next time. Go home, go home, go home. I don't ever take this.